should always I always forget to do that. I'm guessing Sibelia is a girl, but I don't know for sure. I'm guessing a girl. Uh, Sibelia, Karnan, Billy Bob, Buck, Dipstick, or Soda Neve. So right now it looks like the vote's going to be between Sibelia and Karnan. She's a grill. Grill. A highly efficient grill. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got two. That is going to be nice and easy. So we've got Sibelia Enderhill. And we've got Karnan Eternian. All right. We got two left, folks. So there we go. Transcoder. Yay. Nice. Transcoder. Refresh, please. We got the transcoder. Good timing. Hey, hey, what's up, West River Rat? Oh, what was the vote for? You haven't had a... We haven't... We just got the vote in. What's up, West River? Good to see you, man. Okay. Here we go. There's your poll. Now you guys get to choose. The winner of this will be the name. You can either vote for Sibelia or for Karnan. Sibelia Enderhill or Karnan Eternian. Both good names. I'd, I'd be happy with either one of these. These are both good spacey type names, so I like it. Needs to be named Gordon Ramsay. Golden Ramsay. Get the hell out of my kitchen. Iternian. Carmen I oh it's so it's an I. It's with an okay, gotcha. So Car so Carnan Iternian. Not Eternian. Carnan Iternian. Well now that you got the transcoder, um, Murin, you should be able to change it to whatever you want. What's up, Call? How did I get the transcoder? I happen to be one of the top twelve hundred streams right now on Twitch. Yeah, just do a refresh. If you guys are having trouble, make sure that you drop it to the proper quality for your stream viewing enjoyment. Uh, and then you will not have buffer problems. That's the beauty of having the transcoder. Uh, sure, sure. Sure you can, Gross, as long as it's not going to be, well, you know, as long as it's a game soundtrack. Because it tends to be if it's music outside of that, I can run into risks of having the VOD muted and stuff like that. So, so yes, feel free. Don't forget that vote. What's up, Red Lear? It's over 9,000. Don't forget a uh, vote. Uh, don't forget to vote, folks. Either Sibelia Enderhill or Karnan Iternian uh, for uh, your choice. So far... Okay, we've got... It's a game soundtrack. Okay, cool. Come on, people. Five votes. We can do better than that. we got a lot more people in here than that. As soon as this song is over, I will start that. I could probably also do the Transistor soundtrack now that I think of it. Either one of those would work. But yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, you're right. I haven't adjusted it yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My bad. Thanks for reminding me. I didn't change it yet. Hold on, damn it. Okay, uh, I will change that right now as you guys are voting. All right, here is Grows. Nice, okay. Let's see.
Wow. Okay. All right. Info has been updated. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Again, don't forget to refresh if you haven't already with the uh, transcoder joining us now. There we go. Four to four. Tie vote, four to four. Who will win this titanic struggle? We need someone to break this tie vote. <clears throat> Who will win this titanic struggle? Who will it be? Will it be Sibelia? Or Karnan? Karnan totally sounds like a Star Wars, uh... Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic name. Make that vote! Name the character Sobeya Karnan. Matmo chooses Karnan. All right. <laughs> Murin's like, no. Sorry, Murin. That's the problem with the democracy. Oh, Smacky saves it. Tie. Save. All right, still tied. Who's going to break this titanic struggle? They are both great names. I can't deny it. Karnan Sibelia. <laughs> I like this, Groves. This is nice and spacey. Alright, we need someone to break this tie, people. Let's do it. Let's get out of this starting gate. Who's gonna break this tie? Mavis Beacon. Mavis Beacon teaches typing. We should name it Carmen San Diego. Where in the world is Carmen Sabelia? Sabelia Carnal teaches typing. Tied five to five. Chat loves both names. Need that tie-breaking vote, people. Who's it gonna be? 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 I should make an alt again. No. Techno Babylon. Ah, West River Rat. All right. Really? If people are waiting just to tie the vote, please don't do that. Vote for the one that you want it to be, but please don't not vote for 20 minutes, and then when it goes ahead, please vote to tie it, okay? Please don't do that. Choose one. It's exclamation point call. Not I. I'm not saying that's what Straums did, but I'm just saying, like, you know, keep that in mind. All right, we need one more vote, folks. Still got a tie. Still got a tie here. We need one more of those votes. One more vote to make that name stick.
call. You must have voted before, I guess. The same one. Six to six. One more, people. One more vote. This would never have happened in the Thunder Cakeian universe. <laughs> in an extended universe, this would not be an issue. Oh, once on my phone? Nah, you only get to vote once, man. It only is going to register your vote once. Nice try, though. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Alright, one more vote, guys. You really just like Sibelia? Alright. Alright, anybody, anybody, anybody? Anybody, 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 anybody. That's the sad vase you're looking for. <laughs> Alright, let's make this call, folks. Come on, let's get this last vote going here. I want to get into this book. Somebody either has to change their vote or we have to get a tie here. Excuse my really obvious alt. No, no, no. No, no, no. We don't want obvious alts. Well, I mean... What's possible is that I could, um... All right. Yeah, okay. It'll be choose one. All right. Sibelia it is. Sibelia on Ender Hill wins. Glob got that vote. What's up, Glob? So, Sibelia Enderhill is the winner. I liked both those names. Okay, Sibelia Enderhill is the winner. Alright. <laughs> How are you tomorrow? No school! Woo! Okay, here we go. So, your mission. You are a narcotics investigator for the Galactic Federation. You're recognized by your superiors as being among the best in the field, and you have been equipped, listed with the latest in interstellar scout craft and dispatched single-handed to crack a suspected drug ring in the Aleph Cygni star system. Before you can begin, though, you must determine your strengths and your weaknesses. For this, you will require two dice and a pencil to, um, to uh, do this. And it says, as it's possible you won't complete your mission initially, you may wish to take photocopies of the adventure sheet for future adventures. Yeah, I'll bet you might want to do that. Okay. So, um, here we go. So we're going to start out, and this one we're going to start out with... One moment, just a second. We're going to start out with the ship. So we're actually, instead of starting out with stamina, Lego, we're going to start out with the ship. So we're going to start this out with weapons. Wep. Weapon strength. This is the ship's weapon strength. And this is um, what you need to roll less than to score a hit when you're fighting enemy spacecraft. So, Lego, you're going to roll one die. You're going to add six to the result. And then uh, you will enter that total under the weapon strength section. Okay, so roll one die, Lego, if you would, please. Narcotics investigator, yes. So go ahead, Lego is often our, usually our dice roller. So go ahead, Lego, and roll that die, add, and we will add six to it. Three, so we've got a nine. So the ship has got a weapon strength of nine. Okay. Now we have to roll for the shields. This is the uh, points from the shield score when you're hit by fire. For this, you are rolling again one die, one single die for the shields. Yep, so nine for the weapon strength. Now you roll one die, Lego, and we're going to add six to that to give us our shield score for the ship. The 
name of this is There's Nothing Like Trance. Three again. Okay. So nine strength, nine shields. All right. Now we're going to get into the normal things that we have, and that is your own individual stuff. You have uh, stamina, skill, and luck. So <clears throat> let's start with skill. Skill is basically your ability to fight, to uh, escape from tricky situations, to fight both in blaster and hand-to-hand -hand combat. So you're going to roll one die, add six, and we're going to add six to it to get your skill. So we're going to roll one die, add six to it to get your skill. This is always a very important one, the skill roll. You have a hundred-sided die, nice. Yeah, I thought so too, Dragon. But it calls itself there's nothing like trance. All right, what do we got for that skill? Four. Okay, so you got a ten skill. Pretty good. Pretty good. So far, nothing disastrous. Okay, next step is to roll for stamina. Stamina is basically hit points. If it ever reaches zero, you're dead. So you're going to roll two dice. You said three, I mean? Okay, so nine. Really? Wow, all the threes. Okay, that's fine. Now you're going to roll stamina. And you're rolling two dice and adding 12 to it. Two dice, 12 to it to get the stamina scroll. I got the three. I got it. I got it. I got it. So nine total. I got it. You rolled a three. Now stamina. Two dice. Again, this is hit points. Basically. This is lost in transnation. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, eight. All right, pretty good. That's a 20 stamina. So far, Sibelia Enderhill is feeling slightly above average. And last of all, luck. Let's see how lucky we are. It is a d6, but in this case, you're rolling two dice. For stamina, you roll two d6s. Everything else is one d6, but that one is two. So for luck, you're going to roll uh, You're going to roll one six-sided dice. You'll add that to that, and that is how lucky you are in various situations. By the way, you can get involved in blaster combat, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, or in ship combat. You use the same skills, though. It's just based on what's there, so... This is four. Yes, sir. Five. All right. Nice. So that means you have an 11 luck. Okay. 11 luck. Wonderful. And then the last thing is a couple of abilities that you have. You have got a set of Spart missiles. These deadly devices inflict instant and certain destruction upon enemy spacecraft. They can only be used once each. Your spacecraft begins with two of these weapons. So you have two Spart missiles. You've got two Spart missiles in your ship. Um, you also have the ability to replace your stamina by using something called pep pills. Pep pills are basically like provisions. So each pill will restore six points to your stamina and can be taken at any time. And you begin the adventure with four pep, -vil pep pills. We're going to put that under provisions. So pep pills restore four stamina each. Smirt. Yeah, exactly. So there we go. You have four pep pills. And the last thing is your credit amount. During uh, the course of your adventure, you'll probably need certain amounts of cash. You begin the mission with 5,000 Copex, the standard intergalactic currency. 5,000 Copex. 5,000 Copex. All right, there we go. So, there we go, folks. Let me just save this. Let's save this. Save as.
Rings of Kether. Good. All right. We are saved. Kopec boys. We rich boys. <laughs> All right, folks. So, your character's name is Sibelia Enderhill. You are a special narcotics agent um, from the Galactic Federation. You have 9 skill, you have 20 stamina, 11 luck. Your ship has 9 weapon strength, has 9 shields. You have 5,000 Kopex and 4 pep pills, which restore 6 stamina each. You have 2 smart missiles that are sitting on your ship. And that is it. That is what you actually carry. Are you ready, chat? Are you ready? to break the rings of Kether. Let me see that hype. Let me see that golden hype in chat. I'm ready. Hi, Poo. Hype, hype. Hype, 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 hype. What's up, Set? Hype, yes. Hype, man versus game. <laughs> hype, 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 man versus game. All right, let's do it. Mission briefing. The Galactic Federation consists of several hundred civilized worlds, all of which are signatories to certain basic federal laws and conventions. One of these concerns the suppression of trafficking in certain narcotic drugs. Simply, the export of narcotic drugs from one world to another is illegal. The federal police force has become aware, however, of an extremely large flow of the illicit narcotic Satafil D from the tiny Aleph Signy system. As the individual worlds are supposed to police these matters themselves, there has developed some concern that all is not well with the Aleph Signy administration. With the obvious failure of the local administration to deal with this breach of federal law, your department, Federal Central, Vice, has decided to send a grade one investigator you, to locate the source of this drug flow, penetrate the organization responsible, and then destroy it. Because of the possible untrustworthiness of the Aleph Signy authorities, you travel to the system incognito, posing as an interstellar traveling salesman with a cargo of exotic off-world fruit, spices, and luxuries. Once in the system, you are on your own. Good luck. It says, now turn over. All right, and this is what you see in your ship. Let me show you guys what you see. I got it. Let me just capture that. Okay, this is what you guys see. Uh. The. The heck? Oh, it's because. It, okay. Hang on, hang on. OBS's window capture is sometimes astonishingly finicky. Sorry about that. There we go. Your cockpit, ladies and gentlemen. Five minutes to hyperspace termination flashes on the command uh, vidi in front of you. An alarm bell chimes softly through the ship. In a few moments, you will be entering the Alf Signy system, and if there has been any criminal infiltration into the Galactic Vice Squad, there could be a very hot reception. That's right, by MX. So we're trying to find the light switch. Where is it? Four minutes to hyperspace termination. Swiveling in your crash couch, you run a check through your spacecraft's weapon systems. Phasers, check. Smart missiles, two, check. Shields, check. Pretty hefty stuff for a traveling salesman, though no one's to know unless you have to use it. Until such time, your cover should remain intact. You charge at the conventional drive of your spaceship, raise the anti-spy beam shield, and grit your teeth for the stomach-twisting end of hyperspatial travel. Prepare for insertion into real space-time. The bottom drops out of the spaceship. You follow at some super-light speed and... Shh. 
Everything flies back together and is once again, apart from the hangover you seem to have developed in the last moment, back to normal. There on the screen in front of you is the Alf Cygni system, the yellow star Alf Cygni and its single planet, Kether. Kether, your cosmonav tells you, is a habitable world consisting of vast expanses of ocean and apart from a few scattered islands, only one continental landmass. Circling this world is a small pockmarked moon known locally as Rispin's End. Not visible on your vidi screen, but whose presence you are alerted to by your cosmonav is a vast belt consisting of hundreds of thousands of asteroids. All right, guys, here's your first vote of the game, uh, in the game, not counting chat, of course, not counting uh, name choice. Where will you begin your search for the drug runners? Are you going to go to the system's starport on Kether? Are you going to go to the moon? Or are you going to go to the asteroid belt? So where will you begin your search for the drug runners? Kether, the moon, or the asteroid belt? Where do you want to go first to try to find them? Huge tracks of land. Where is it going to be? And when you vote, you can feel free to tell people why you're voting the way you are. Okay, sounds good, Lego. Kether, moon, or asteroid belt? <laughs> yeah. Why would there ever be drugs in a port? Yeah. All right, there it is. Thanks, Shadow. Kether, moon, or asteroid belt? Ah, I see chat has different opinions. That's no moon. It's easy to hide it, yeah? If you're wrong, no one sees you, so no loss. Yeah. It's fair. Alright, last call, last call. Get in your vote now if you want to go to Kether, the moon, or the asteroid belt. Now is your chance to let your voice be heard. <laughs> yeah. Plus there's like, and there's also the man in the moon, right? So it's like the man the guy stuff going to close that poll. So the moon it is. You guys have decided to go to the moon. Straight to the moon, Alice. All right. You accelerate towards Rispin's end at a steady three Gs. When you arrive, will you survey the moon from orbit or will you land at the only base and take a closer look? So you guys get to the moon. Are you going to survey it from orbit or are you going to... That's not nuke it from orbit, by the way. You're going to survey it from orbit or are you going to land at the only base and take a closer look? Yeah, good call on the soundtrack, Rose. I like it. Very spacey. Got a lot of survey. We got one land. Got a lot of survey. It's the only way to be sure, right, Cheddar?
Being careful can't hurt. Yeah. No, I think there's something to that for sure. I do not think it can hurt. Okay. All right. Last call, people. Last call. Last call for this vote. Right now we've got a uh, current poll winner is survey, so last call. It looks like survey is in the lead, I think, fairly strongly. So here we go. All right. Here we go. Survey it is. So you guys are going to land at the only base and survey. Here's what you find out. The dome-covered base has a population of about 300. You don't detect anything even remotely suspicious there. A few tourists and lots of scientists and technicians. You hire a small rocket scooter for a few days to scour the surface of this tiny moon, detect 500 kopex to cover costs. All right, so now you're down to... I'm not going to go through all that. You're down to 4,500. The search, however, proves fruitless. You find a couple of prospectors and one technical team looking at vacuum welding of the moon's crust, but no illegal drug manufacturers. You leave Rispin's End and head for the main planet, Kether. You land at Kether's only starport, which is on the continental landmass and only 10 kilometers from the planet's capital city. Your, only sh uh, your ship is towed to its parking space, where, to your dismay, you are boarded by several customs officers looking for contraband. What, drugs? You ask. No, they look at you smugly before replying. No, technology. And this, says one of them finding your spy ray, is an example of it. I'm sorry, this device is a prohibited import and as such will not be returned to you. Good day. They leave the spacecraft. Cross the spy ray off your equipment list. I actually didn't put it on the list, so I guess we're okay there. Rather brusque treatment and they didn't even check your cargo. Now, here's what you could do. You're at the spaceport. You could ask a few questions around the starport. You could go to the local law enforcement headquarters and ask for help. Or if you want to keep a really low profile, you could find a shady starport canteen, a wretched hive of scum and villainy, in which to conduct a few discreet inquiries. So here are your choices, guys. You can either ask a few questions around the starport, go to the local law enforcement headquarters, or keep a low profile and go to a shady starport canteen. So, starport, head, law enforcement headquarters, or starport canteen. What's it going to be? What is it going to be, people? And hold on a second while Shadow is putting together the poll. There it is. Ask around Starport, local law enforcement, or Canteen. What are you guys voting for? Canteen. <laughs> yep. See, I had a feeling I said wretched hive of scum and villainy. See, yeah, exactly. I, I, I knew when I said that I was I was kind of like, I was really waiting the field. That's what I was doing. Because you guys are like, of course you want to go to there. What's up, Lord? Now, depending on how this happens. What's up, Lord? Good to see you, man. Good to see everyone tonight. I hope everybody is doing well and you guys like what you see in here. If you do, uh, my name is Arvin Nelleron. I play all sorts of different games, but I tend to focus on story and narrative-based games. So a lot of RPGs, games like Dungeons & Dragons, things like that. Uh, I'm currently finishing up Shadowrun Hong Kong. On Thursday, I'll be doing a big voiceover event um, with uh, voice actors to finish up Shadowrun Hong Kong. Over the weekend, Icewind Dale. And then Tuesday of next week, I'm going to be doing starting a show at the Good Old Games Twitch channel. They've asked me to do a show there once weekly, and I'm going to be doing a uh, show starting Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Sorry, at 8 p.m. Eastern, I beg your pardon, called Pen and Pixels, which is going to focus on story and narrative also over there. And then again, I'll be back at my channel after that. So uh, if any of that sounds good to you, please make sure to follow the stream. Please make sure to support the Patreon right up there and check out the Steam group and the YouTube as well. And thanks for being here, everybody. Okay, looks like we're going... Okay. Thank you, Shadow. All right, all right. So, here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. I recognize that doing this may, in fact, cause my VOD to be muted. Although, I really hope it doesn't. But I feel like this is a requirement.
It's just too good. I, I can't. It's too good. I can't. It's too good. The canteen you find is advertised by a gaudy crypto fluorescent animated sign depicting a large crush class stellar battleship diving into a foaming glass of undefined liquid. The sound effects are deafening, full of fusion motor roars, laser zaps, and damn sized splashes. Looks promising. Entering the premises, you find the joint packed with drunken flotsam and jetsam. There is hearty laughter, the obligatory fight in the corner, and it is all very, very noisy. A small sign over the bar announces that no aliens are allowed. Very promising. Will you approach one of the parmaids for a tip about who in the bar might best be approached for a bit of underworld largesse, or just mingle to see what you can find out? So, what's it going to be, guys? Do you want to approach one of the barmaids for a tip about where to find what you need, or do you just want to mingle with the crowd to see what you can find out? It's not quite the original, guys, but I mean, maybe I have half a chance of this not getting muted then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shadow. All right. I just had to do that. I just, I just felt like that was just, it was just too good. It was too necessary. Hopefully the, uh, hopefully the fuzz at, uh, at Lucasfilms will not get a hold of it and mute it, but. Every so often, you just gotta go. If you gotta go, you gotta go. Just, just, it's too good. It just felt right. I have a feeling I know how this vote's gonna go, actually. Let me see. Ah, uh, well, not totally. Not totally. Last call, people. Last call. Right now, barmaids is four votes to two, but we can get some more votes in there. Last call. You're gonna get the vote from the barmaids. You're gonna go to uh, tip from the barmaids, or you're gonna try to mingle with the crowd. What's it gonna be? I want to say that I've heard of this game that this is from. Grows. I've heard of Techno Babylon. I think. I've heard of this. Anyone else? Anyone else for this vote? Who else is going to choose this vote? Who would it like to be? Who we got? If not, I shall take that vote and we'll move forward with Tip from Barmaids. Tip the barmaid into the crowd. What's up, Ghost? How you doing? Yeah, I think I see how that's going. All right, here we go. Okay, tip from the barmaids, it is. Hi there, you shouted a young bar wench. I'm new in town, and I'm sort of looking for somebody who can help a young, unscrupulous type of person like me get along without having to work in a regular way, see? Oh yeah? She shouts back disdainfully. What do you do, Zero Head? You perform a quick bit of thinking here. What's absolutely essential for a drug-producing outfit? I'm a chemist. I make funny little crystals for people to stick in their bloodstreams, you yell. She blinks at you a bit, obviously thinking without seeing you. Hiking up her skirt, she reveals a garter purse. Slapping it, she says, 500 kopecks, jerk. Will you pay her or not? If you decide not to pay, you'll have to mingle with the, with the throng, with the crowd. So will you pay her the 500 kopecks so she can give you a lead? Or are you going to mingle with the crowd? What's up, Aklaba? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. So, are you going to give her the money? Are you going to pay her the monies? Or are you going to mingle? Pay or mingle? Garter purse hype. <laughs> exactly. Akalaba, uh, you, by the way, are a character who is trying to break a drug ring. So that's what you're here for. All right, we got mingle, we got pay, we got mingle, we got mingle. I don't trust that. We got pay. Oh, you can't sleep? Oh, sorry, man. 
Well, you can hang out with us for a bit. There's been a new ruling to help a mom that uploaded a video of her baby, or baby dancing to a Prince song won her lawsuit against the music group. Using music for fair use and not making money is okay. Music company needs to review each video on case by case, not automatic takedown quest. Oh, nice. That's good to hear, Dragon. That's good. So we can get out of these stupid patent trolls that do this kind of stuff. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Smash them drug rings. You say choose random? Can you do that? You can choose random? Whoops. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, we got six votes for Mingle and three votes for Pay 500. I did not know that. All right, last call, last call. All right, good night, Dragon. No, I wasn't thinking so much about Twitch as much as I was about YouTube, but yeah. I was thinking more about YouTube. Okay. Good night, Dragon. Sleep well. Okay, so mingle it is. All right, time to mingle with the throng. You mingle for a while before finding a likely person. Throw a die, Lego. Please roll the die. Please roll one die. Okay. Okay. You find a slightly deranged starship navigator to talk to. He grabs you by the neck as you stand at the bar and says in a low voice, Beware. Well, he might know something. You buy him a drink and sit at a table with him. Crouch low over his beer as if he's trying to hide his head in his shoulders. He begins to mutter a long, paranoid tale about the Tau Signy threat, whatever that is. Due to the noise in the bar and the navigator's dull voice, you missed most of his monologue and find, when he suddenly and unexpectedly reaches the end of his tale, that the only information you have gleaned from him is his suspicion that something odd is going on at Rispin's end, and that the fat woman playing cards at the table behind you has something to do with it. What to make of that? Will you go out to Rispin's end, the moon, to see if anything is to be found? Or will you keep an eye on the woman at the table behind you? So are you going to go up to the moon? Or are you going to keep an eye on the woman behind you? Apparently it was a cheap copet. Yeah. Looks like it didn't cost you any money. That was just like spare change, you know. Spare change. Not a big deal. Uh, so the two choices, that's okay. The two choices are, do you want to go out to Rispin's End, the moon, to see if anything's to be found? Or will you keep an eye at the woman in the table behind you? The one that he says is the one behind what's going on at Rispin's moon. So go to Rispin's End, go to the moon, or find out what's going on with that lady that he says is behind things. Whatever that means. Alright, moon or keep an eye on the woman? Aren't the same? Theoretically. Ah. 
Ah, I see a lot of people have decided they want to keep an eye on this woman. They're like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. It looks like chat's clearly in favor of uh, keeping eye on the woman. On the woman. Okay. So that's what it's going to be. Let's see what we got. The woman is really horrible. Gap-toothed, heavy, beery, burping, and coarse. But the way she commands the men playing cards with her shows that she has real power. What form of power, however, is yet to be seen. Will you try to join the card players, or will you wait until they finish and then follow the woman? So will you try to join the card players, or wait until they finish and then follow the woman? What's up, Dorgo? How you doing, man? I'm pretty sure they will too, Groves. Yeah, I'm sure of that. In fact, I even talked to them over there about the possibility of doing something like this over there once in a while. So, I, I would think so. And I think... I need to double check, but I think... I don't... I actually... Well, I'm not sure. I was wondering if Tin Man released any of their stuff through Good Old Games. I don't know if they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't, but... Something to think about. Choose to because stalking in space isn't a crime. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, I definitely can see some, some value to waiting and following too. I can definitely see that also. Alright, last call then. Last call because it looks like people are, people are behind that idea. Okay. Wait and follow it is. That's what you're going to do. All right. After a few hours, the woman surges to her feet with an enormous burp and staggers from the bar into the street. The men she was playing with, now looking disheveled and tired, lay down their cards and order drinks from the bar. It seems they are going to stay for a while longer. You put down your glass and slip after the woman. It is dark outside, thus affording you plenty of concealment as you follow her. Lego, assuming you're back, please roll two dice. Roll two dice and let me know what you get. Yeah, I've got it or gravity will. That's no moon. So yeah, Lego, if you're about seven. All right, so it's less than your skill. The woman seems to remain unaware of your presence. Uh, and after a short time, enters a five-story apartment block. A few moments after entering, a fourth floor light comes on. You go up to the block's porch and look at the residence list. Five names, one per floor, probably. The fourth floor is occupied by Zara Gross, Stellar and Interplanetary Import Export. So it says Zara Gross, Stellar and Interplanetary Interplanetary Import Export. Will you stay and watch her apartment, or will you call it a day and spend the morrow searching in the city central library for some information about this Zara Gross? So will you stay and watch her apartment, or will you go to the library to find out about her tomorrow? What's it going to be? All right, you're going to watch this Zara Gross. Now I'm beginning to wonder if this picture that you guys are looking at is actually Zara Gross. I assumed that it was like some dude, but maybe it's actually Zara Gross. Maybe she is Zara Gross. It's possible. We like to watch. Low hanging fruit, Shatter. Low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit, man. I like it.
She's a different kind of beautiful. It's actually gross. It's like G-R-O-S-S. -S. It's literally that. All right, four votes for watch, three votes for library. Going once. Last call here, last call. Last call. Last call. This is giving me a real Blade Runner vibe, this, song, this music. As you would expect it would. All right, we're tied. Four votes for watch, four votes for library. We're tied. Who else is... Who is going to break this tie? Who will win this Titanic struggle? For watch. All right, last call. Okay. Watch wins. Five votes to three. Watch wins. So you guys are going to watch. All right. You hide on the porch of the apartment block next door. Just in time, too, for a thin man comes along the street and enters the porch of the woman's building. He steps on the intercom. Zara? Yeah? Comes the crackling machine distorted reply. It's Arthur. Ah, good. Come on up. He enters the building and emerges ten minutes later, looks cautiously up and down the street, and strides off towards the city center. Will you follow the man, or will you continue to watch the apartment? Will you follow the man or can, who just walked out after looking up and down the street? you follow the man or continue to watch? So this guy just came out looking anxious. Are you going to follow him or not? Okay, we got some votes for follow the man. Follow man. Yep. More votes for follow man. Follow man. Man must be followed. Anybody else? On the other hand, I guess you could make... You could also make an argument... Yeah, shaking down a pawn on the leader. I guess you could make the argument that you know where she lives. Whereas you have no idea where this guy lives. I guess you could make that argument too. But they're both, they're both reasonable conclusions. Oh, gross. Just, you just changed your vote? <laughs> you changed your vote because of my musings? I have no idea. I have no idea. I have not looked ahead. I have no idea. So don't, don't, you know. I'm, if you're convinced by my musings, that's cool, but. Okay. All right, then. There we go. Then follow the man. See, that's what I like. That discussion we all decide together. Okay, you're going to follow the guy. Here we go. He spots you following and ducks down a side street. You try to give chase, but he is nowhere to be seen. Lost him. Suddenly... Oh, sorry, Rogan. Suddenly, a hand grabs your arm and drags you into the shadowy shelter between two buildings. It is the man you were chasing. What? You try to say before he claps a hand over your mouth. He pulls out a pad and scrawls, 
quiet spy beam on it, and then meet me, Hotel Miramar, room 1201, one hour. Then he strides off. So the guy writes down on the pad of paper, quiet spy beam, and then says, meet me, Hotel Miramar, room 1201, one hour. Then he strides off. Will you go to meet him? Or are you going to go back and start watching Zaragros's apartment again? The plot thickens, people. You gonna go meet this guy? Or are you gonna go back and watch your apartment? Or are you gonna go meet him? Spy beam, like, well, I'd assume it's a camera. I don't know, but I guess it's a camera. Can I eat it? I don't know whether a spy beam would be delicious. Maybe with chocolate? Each guy watch gross. Okay, meat guy, all right. Let's see what the will of chat is. Okay. Last call, we're gonna close this down just a second because it seems pretty clear that chat wants to meet this guy. All right, I'd say that's pretty definitive. Okay, so you guys are gonna meet the guy. All right, so here's what happens. It is night. The Hotel Miramar is a dive. The elevator is out of order. There is no heating. Arriving at the 12th floor after running up the stairs, you lean for a moment in the doorway to catch your breath. The door to 1201, which is just next to you, opens. A shifty-looking character, putting something in his jacket pocket, steps out. He looks a bit surprised at seeing you. He waits impatiently by the elevator until, realizing that it is out of order, he heads for the stairs and clatters off down towards street level. Will you enter 1201, or will you follow the man who just left? By the way, this man who just left is not the same guy that originally caught that you just uh, that you just met back in the alleyway. So, are you going to enter 1201, or follow the man who just left? No, I like this, actually. I like this music. I think it fits. What's up, Law? <laughs> Should play some Rebecca Black. Oh, God. Don't know about that. Voted for one, 1201. Fridays. Looks pretty definitive that people want to go in there. Okay. It's 1200 zero. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, there haven't been a lot of pictures in this one so far. There really haven't been. You tap gently on the door. No answer. You tap again. A groan comes from within. You try the door, but it is locked. The seconds are ticking away, and the ever more distant sound of steps going down can still be heard. Will you force your way into the room to respond to the groan that you've just heard, or will you go in pursuit of the man who just went down the stairs? So, will you force your way into the room? So there's a groan inside. Someone groaned inside the room. Will you force your way into the room or go in pursuit of the man who just went down the stairs? I'm digging this. This has got like a nice, this has got like a cool noir feel, this book. I like it. I like it. 
This one, by the way, is written not by Steve Jackson or Ian Livingstone. This is written by Andrew Chapman. Choose one because that dude is so yesterday. Get over him. Choose random because destiny. All right, six votes for force way in. Last call. I'm going to give this last call. Last call, last call on this. Last call. Okay, that's pretty definitive. Most people want to force their way in. Under a hefty shoulder, the door collapses. Inside on the floor, in a pool of blood, is the man you were supposed to meet, shot. His eyes open and he crooks a finger at you in an attempt to call you over. Beware, he whispers when you are closer. Beware of, of Sarah Gross and, and Blaster B. <sighs> he expires, the last words too much for him. So again, he said, beware of Zara Gross and Blaster B, and then he died before he could say anything more. You search his body and find a wallet and a letter. The wallet identifies the man as being Arthur Flange of no fixed address. The letter is from a friend or acquaintance of his. It reads, Dear Arthur, we are plans. Z doesn't suspect yet. We must work out the final details. Meet me at the cafe Heroes of the Federation on Thursday at 9 a.m. Clive Torres. Will you go to meet Clive tomorrow in place of Arthur? Or will you go to the city central library to look up the Zara Gross that Arthur mentioned? Her name might be raised in a case file, uh, in a case list somewhere. So, will you go to meet Clive tomorrow in place of Arthur? Or will you go to the city central library to look up Zara Gross? Welcome back, Rob. Blaster B. That's it, Blaster B. That's a picture of Zara Gross. That is gross. I'll say that. That is gross. Definitely gross. Go to meet Clive. Yeah, I like how you guys, you guys are doing exactly what I would do. You're like, pick up this thread, pick up this thread, pick up this thread. Nope, screw you. Pick up this thread, pick up this thread. You guys are doing exactly what I would do. You're just like picking up the threads all the time. I love it. I love it. I love it. And also, good call. Uh, by the way, I want to I want to give uh, Biomex a pop because uh, Biomex is doing a good job of uh, sort of pointing out why he's voting the way he is. So that's cool. Nice, Rob. I'm really, I really look forward to that, man. Again, just for those of you who didn't know this, on Thursday I have a major voiceover event, uh, which I'm coordinating with Hairbrain Schemes, actually. Um, a, a voiceover event on my channel. As you guys know, last month I actually did a, ch a stream from Hairbrain Scheme Studios in Seattle with a voiceover, uh, with some voice pro voiceover viewers of mine uh, in uh, Seattle, Washington, and we actually did the opening of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Now the game's just about done, and so on Thursday we're going to be doing another such event, this time not in Seattle, with uh, the R Vocalists, which will be um, Trendane, Russ Guberman, um, uh, BB, um, BB Wolf, I had to make sure I got the name right, BB Wolf, um, George Ledoux, who's been in here for quite a while, Rob from Game Trashers, and your smize, yours truly, uh, me. We will be doing that voiceover event at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, Daylight Savings Time this coming Thursday, so please mark your calendars for that. It should be a lot of fun. Should be good times. Even your mistake, Rob, sounded awfully good. I said Game Crashers, although I should say that. Game Trashers. Game Thrashers, that's what I should say. Even your mistakes sound badass, Rob. So, 
You know the deal. All right, you guys want to go to Clive. Game Rashers. <laughs> I know it's called Game Crashers. This Thursday, Smacky. This Thursday. All right. No, it was Game Crashers. I just, you know. All right, you're going to go meet Clive. Time to go meet Clive Drexler. All right. The Cafe Heroes of the Federation you find is a small establishment on the outskirts of the city. At 9 a.m., it is completely deserted. Seating yourself in a discreet position, you order breakfast and wait for Clive Torres. After two hours, the only other people who have been in the cafe are two old ladies who have had a slice of toast between them, a young couple and a child. None of them could possibly have been Clive. It looks like he's not going to show. Something may have happened to him, so you decide to follow him up. Will you ask the cafe owner if he's seen or heard from him, or will you try to find his address? What's it going to be, guys? Do you want to ask the cafe owner if he's seen or heard from Clive? Or do you want to find his address? What are we going to do about this bastard, Clive? What is it going to be? Hey, Clive is the baby. <laughs> he's actually, right, he's actually like Stewie. You know, he's just like, he's just like... All right, first of all, I'm going to do exactly what you tell me, and then I'm going to be a drug runner. Understand? Squash dashers. You have to go and record a prologue for a video game. Nice. What video game, Trendane? Are you at liberty to say? Trendane, one of our professional voice actors. What Are you uh, at liberty to say what video game, Trendane? It... Wow. Oh, nice. This should be the combat music. Um, I don't know, Groz. It doesn't say how you're going to find his address. It just says try to find his address. You know? All right, we got four, four to two, four to two. Gonna ask the car, gonna ask the thing. Are you gonna go to the Clive? Find out what his address is. Are you gonna stay alive? Oh, you gotta ask the cafe owner. Are you gonna be a loner? Are you gonna find the library tonight? Ooh. You look under C for Clive. This is like 80s. This is totally 80s. You get like the the one with the mod hair doing the playing the like the synthesizer. This is the kind of music that Rob secretly loves. Rob, tell me tell me right now. Is this not the music you would like to have on your channel if you could get away with it? Would this not be the kind of music you'd want to open up the stream if you could get away with it without people being like, wait, what? Tell me you wouldn't want to play this, Rob. Come on now. You know, fess up. Fess up. Is this sticks? Last call. But this, it, it's like, it should go right into an aha song, you know? It's going to be like, take on me, take on me. <laughs> Even the ending. Da -da -da. It's like Miami Vice. I love it. Oh, it's awesome. Okay, ask uh, the cafe owner about Clive. All right. The cafe owner doesn't recall the name and has not seen anyone other than those you saw enter the premises. Disgruntled, you leave the cafe. Oi, you, calls a voice behind you. Turning, you see this. Here we go, guys. You're about to see something. You're about to see an image. Yep. 
Get ready for it. This is what you guys see. You see this. That's right, it's Han Solo. No. Oh, you! Calls a voice behind you. Turning, you see that it is a clean-cut looking fellow pointing a blaster at you. Come here! He waves the gun menacingly. Will you attempt to run from him or draw your own blaster and threaten him back? So he's holding a blaster at you. Will you attempt to run from him or draw your own blaster and threaten him back? Is that Billy Joel? Yes. He points the blaster at you and then starts going, It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. The regular crowd shuffles in. Bang, bang. That's exactly what he does. Or actually, it would be pew, pew. Run. Du -du 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 Duel. Christopher Walken. He looks at you and says, I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Da, 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 That's it, Rogan. I know, man. I know. I know it. Sad times we live in. Sad times. That is exactly right. That's fair enough. Wow, a lot of people for duel. All right. All right, yeah, you could, right, if you get on even ground, yes. The heck is he wearing? Is that like a cloak? What the hell is this? What, does anybody know what this is? What the devil is that, like, does that... Is that cloak got like amoebas on it? What the heck is that? Okay, yeah, yeah. That well, I if you know, if it turns out that we go into combat, I'm gonna play this for Rob, and I want Rob to tell me that he wouldn't want to play this music. It's a zebra. Okay, so duel it is. So Rob, here's the music that we just heard before that I was saying you secretly wanted to play on your channel if you could get away with it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. This is it. This is the music. Tell me you would not want to play this music, Rob, if you could get away with it. All right, chat. As you draw your blaster, he fires at you. You will have to fight him. It's time to battle. <laughs> Cows from Mass Effect that steal your credits, exactly. Space Cow. <laughs> okay, so the way that a blaster fight works in this game, it's not totally like the previous ones. The way it works is, um, you roll two dice, um, and you compare it to your skill. So, you have to roll two dice, um, and, uh, compare it to your skill. So that's the first thing you have to do. Battle with battle music. I love it, right? Isn't it great? Okay, so, um, Lego, you need to roll two dice and we need to compare it to your skill. You have to get equal to or less than your skill to hit him. Blaster fight! Blaster fight! I'm gonna fight the Harrison Ford. Han Solo is wearing a spaced cow, you will not pay for it. Yes, hand shot first. No, Greedo didn't shoot first. No, he didn't. Go to hell, George Lucas. Stop playing with our childhood dreams. Do, 
dreams, 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 dreams. Okay, so Lego, you're rolling two dice. Did you get that, Lego? Two dice, seven. All right, you have hit. That means you have hit your foe and inflicted damage on him. Combat with blasters is much more deadly. He loses four stamina points. Then he gets to return fire. So now he gets to return fire. So he now has a chance to roll two dice. If it's higher than or equal to um, the, my opponent's skill, then you've missed. So his skill is six. He gets a five. Oh my god, he hits you. Deduct four points. Oh man, son. Okay, your turn, Lego. Now you have to fire at him. I was talking about the shooting first thing. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. Have a good night, Cole. So, second roll, uh, second roll, Lego. What's that next roll? Five. All right, you hit him and you kill him. Down goes the gunman, Harrison Ford. You have defeated him. You've defeated him and this is how you know because you hear this. <laughs> and then like it rolls to the credits. Oh, I love it. The dual music was badass. I love that. Okay. The gunman has collapsed on the sidewalk. A pool of blood is spreading towards the gutter. You approach him cautiously. He opens his eyes and watches you. Zara has you marked, he whispers. We took Clive to Sparks this morning. You, you're next, he expires. Looks like you won't be able to find Clive now. He's probably already six foot under. If they are planning to drag you into a place called Sparks a bar you discover when looking it up in a directory a bit later, then perhaps you should preempt them by showing up at this place, incognito, first. Alright guys, the plot thickens. I'll tell you what, if Zara Gross is not the drug runner, she's certainly making an awfully good uh, show of it. I'm going to give you guys a save point here. I think that's appropriate. Good stuff, guys. <laughs> Freeze frame. Credits. Executive producer, Arvin Elrond. <laughs> oh, my God. Down goes Walken. You killed Christopher Walken. He's like, <laughs> guys, I cannot believe that you have just taken me out. Because I had a... <laughs> okay. Entering the place, you are struck by the noise and thick atmosphere. What a joint. You saunter up to the bar, order a drink, and then turn to survey the crowd. Standing in front of you, blasters pointing at your stomach from 15 centimeters away, are two men. Come with us, they say matter-of-factly, or we will kill you. I like the fact that it says they will say it, so I guess they say it together at the same time. They're like, come with us, or we will kill you. <laughs> and you look at them and you go, I am a man with special skills. <laughs> skills that make it possible for me to resist men like you. If you take me with you, I will find you, and I will kill you. Um, you would almost certainly be shot to pieces if you were to try to jump them, so you do as they say. Hey, won't be turned out be the father, exactly right. They lead you out the back. The Kung Fury short film, do I really? Oh, I should check that out. I like Kung Fu films, too. Out the back is a large black ground car with reflective windows. They bundle you into the rear, keeping their guns trained on you. Time for a little ride, <laughs> laughs the driver. You are taken for a drive out of the city and into the country, to a large manor house. There are shady-looking gunmen all over the grounds. As you are led out of the car towards the house, you see an opportunity to escape. A quick dive into a privet hedge, followed by a short roll down an embankment, and then a sprint for all you're worth. Will you attempt this escape, or will you let the gunman lead you into the house? What's it going to be, guys? Are you going to attempt this escape? Or are you going to let the gunman lead you into the house?
We're Emily Blunt. I guess so. Yeah, well, it's a close vote because it's a close call. Like, I, I don't... I don't really... I mean, we're getting up to the point, I should say, in these books. I mean, obviously, I've played all the books. All the books that I have up to uh, 21, I've played all of them. Um, but I have to admit that um, now that we're getting up into, like, 15 territory, I don't remember this. I mean, I remember playing it, but I don't remember... I remember, like, little bits and pieces, but I don't remember anything about what was there. So, so this is... This is... Tough call. Tough call. Tough call. All right, we got four votes for house, two votes for attempt escape. Anyone else? What do you guys think? What's it going to be? Go for that house? Or attempt escape? House or escape? Have you? Oh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, listen, you guys just beat a really tough one. You guys beat a tough one in Temple of Terror. Temple of Terror is hard. So you guys did a good job beating that down. So maybe you guys have earned a somewhat easier one. All right, last call. Last call. Looks like most people are heading towards house. So last call here, last call. He's selling this exact one right now, Grows. Is that what you said before? I saw you posted a book up there. Uh, I didn't see it. Sorry, I missed the link. So he's selling that book, really, Grows? That's hilarious. I'm telling you, man. Great minds think alike, right? Except why is he selling it? You should tell him to keep it at all costs. Temple of Terror was good, man. That was a good one. It was That was rough. That one was definitely rough. You guys had a shan man's, a sandworm's tooth you had to use and... Lot of stuff. It was really good, yeah. All right, house. They lead you into the manor house. All right, people. Now that picture that grows uh, was kind enough to look up before. That may have been foreshadowing this very moment, because let me show you what you guys see. This is what you guys see. There we go. You find yourself in a plush room, either a library or a study. Books on real wooden shelves line the walls. There is real wooden furniture, heavy and smoky with long years. Behind a massive desk sits an equally massive but certainly uglier woman. She smiles, gap-toothed at you. You gave us quite a turn, you did, dropping out of space all unexpected-like. Isn't that so, boys? She looks around at the other gangsters who are lolling about on the rest of the furniture, cigarettes dangling from their lips and bleary, boozy eyes fixed disinterestedly on you. Yeah, they answer. We don't have federal investigators visiting our little planet at all often. Do we, boys? She asks again. Nah. Suddenly she leans forward, staring at you. Her voice is icy. You have two choices, Nark. Either you go to a meeting that we've arranged for you to pick up a box of documents for us, or else. Will you agree to go to the meeting, or take the or else? Will you agree to go to the meeting, or take the or else? What's up with intent? Can you escape now? Now can we escape? Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's also wearing a cow. Does everybody on this planet wear cow? Is this the popular fashion? Like, this is all cow sense. Is this all fashion sense? Is, is all cow skin? Really? 
Everybody wears a cow. Everyone on this alien planet has decided there's no reason for like, you know, normal clothing. We'll just wear cow. Like not even like, you know, leather that's been shaped. No, we'll just take a, a skin of a cow and we'll just wrap it around us. That's exactly it, Shatter. We don't know what Orel says. She is a cow. Well, yes. Certainly looks like that. They told the artist, come up with the ugliest person you could possibly conceive of. He's like, all right. She is uh, not attractive. I would say that's true. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. Like, she's not... It's just goofy. In fact, she's got those highlights, so she looks vaguely like... Oh, God. Who was the... She looks like Bride of Frankenstein a little bit. A little bit like that, you know? I Well, they obviously, Smacky, obviously the cows migrated there. Okay? They built a spaceship and they migrated there. Duh. <laughs> okay. Uh, we need some more votes than that, guys. What else can we get here? What other votes can we get? She looks like Mama Frankenstein. It's true. Meeting or else. Meeting or else. She looks like a female version of Beetlejuice. It moves real well. Very nice, Rob. Rob, that, that joke was utterly ridiculous. You might be thinking to yourselves, dare he go any farther? But he's not going to cheese it like that because he is the cream of the crop. Yeah! Who's with me? Sign me up! Oh, uh, I will bring the puns down in waves! Waves, son. Waves. I will bring them down in waves. You will feel the cow... <laughs> you will feel the cow puns coming down like nobody's business. Uh, oh yeah. That streak of puns just gave me a bruise. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Didn't have a chance. It's true, it was like, body blow, body blow, body blow. I was, I was just doing a chain combo of puns. It was great. I got an achievement for that. Okay, so you guys are going to agree to go to the meeting. We need Arv Bingo. <laughs> All right. The meeting they have arranged for you is with Mrs. Torres. Yeah, let me remind everybody, by the way, that hopefully, uh, as we're moving the channel, you guys know, towards partnership, um, I'm going to be applying again soon. Uh, but in the meantime, um, if anyone has got an idea for a couple of emotes um, that you want to put together for the Better TTV, like Better TTV emotes, which we could then move over to partnership emotes when whenever the partnership happens down the line um that would be awesome so if you guys have ideas for possible emotes including like our bingo uh you can feel free to do that just milk it for all it's worth arv sings arv makes four more puns in a go <laughs> i love it it is true okay the meeting they have arranged for you is with mrs taurus wife of clive taurus one of their ex-buddies well you guys know who clive taurus is they take you to the glass houses in the enormous botanic gardens of Kether's capital city. The documents, the punk driver of the black ground sloop urine explains, are in a safety deposit box. She'll have them for you. They park behind a glass house, show you where Mrs. Torres is standing, and push you from the car. You walk towards her. Mrs. Torres, you say. She turns, but at that moment, two shots ring out from a copse of trees to your left. One slams into Mrs. Torres, the other into you. Throw one die and deduct the result from your stamina. Oh, man. All right, sounds good. Good night, Biomex. Thanks for stopping by, as always. Good to see you. So, you got to roll one die, Lego, and deduct the result from your stamina. Make it a low roll this time. And you may want to think about having one of those pep pills. The pep pills restore six stamina, not four. So, depending on how much damage you take here, you might want to take one of those pep pills.
Yeah, I'd recommend uh, getting not six there. No six. RBS. Not six. That's what I'd recommend. Lego, you with us? Summoning Lego. Lego, Lego. Lego, Lego. There it is. Two. All right. Now, that's actually a pretty good roll. Now, do you guys want to take one of your pet pills to bring you back up to 20? So, the pet pills restore six. Do you want to take... You don't have to vote for this one. You can just tell me in chat. Do you guys want to vote... This is for Taurus. Nice game. Do you want to take uh, one pet pill so you would go back up to 20? That would leave you with three pet pills and you'd be at max stamina. Let me know if you want to do that or not. Just, like, let me know yes or no quickly in chat. And then we'll move on with what happens here. Take the drugs. Yes. Take the drugs. Yes. Ooh, a little Moonlight Sonata. Nice. That's it. That's all we got. We got one vote. Two votes. Anyone else? Anyone else? You go to this. Yes, yes, yes. Good votes. Yes. Approved. Done. Yes, approved. Agreed. Unless I hear see a bunch of no's, I'm going to assume that's a yes. So... I love the Moonlight Sonata. It's one of my favorite piano pieces. Particularly this movement. Okay. There we go. Choose is random. Drugs are always the answer. Okay. Sounds good. So you guys are up to 20. All right. So, you're back up to 20. You both fall to the ground, Mrs. Taurus dropping the bag she was carrying. The safety deposit box with the incriminating documents falls out. Before you can react, the sniper dashes over, grabs the box, and leaps into a sloop, which squeals off. What a setup! You lurch to your feet. Looking down at Mrs. Taurus, you see she is already dead, and you chase after the vehicle. You run out onto the road, narrowly being missed by a carload of picnickers, out for a jolly time in the gardens. The black sloop is tearing down the street past another car which is heading toward you. Will you shoot at the villain's car? Or will you flag the other car down so as to give chase? Will you shoot at the rapidly disappearing car or will you try to flag the car, the other car down so as to give chase? That's pretty much it. This is your boss right now. So will you try to shoot at the disappearing car or will you flag down the other car to give chase? Basically, do you want a car chase? Shoot at the car, or chase the car, or car chase scene. Blues Brothers. A <laughs> taxi. Taxi! Choose two because buddy cop movies. See, exactly, Smacky. That's, that's what I was expecting. I thought people would be all over that. They're like, wait, I get to be in a big race? That's, that's awesome. That's what I want. Programming note, by the way, um, we've got about another 15 minutes or so. Then I'm going to do my giveaway, and then we'll uh, then we'll do the giveaway, and then we'll do the raid for the night. So about 15 minutes or so, and then we'll wrap it for the evening. Uh, and then uh, next time you'll see me will be Thursday for the awesome voiceover stream. Uh, and then we've got one more session, probably I'm guessing, of um, this, of the Rings of Kither, and then we'll be on to uh, the next game. Icewind Dale over the weekend, remember, and then on Tuesday, uh, moving on to the first Pen and Pixel show over at goodoldgames.com, the Twitch channel there, uh, and I'm going to be doing the uh, Star Trek 25th anniversary game there, uh, and then uh, on our channel, after Shadowrun's done, I am probably going to be playing Alpha Protocol on my channel and giving that a try, despite the fact that Rob hates it, um, but I'm still going to be trying it, so... We're on a mission from God. Thanks, Shadow. All right. So, I think it's pretty clear the chat wants to flag down another car. Flag down another car, it is. All right. The driver... Uh, let's see. The driver, in response to your frantic waving, pulls over to the side of the road. What? What? 
he asks in astonishment when you drag him from the car. Hey, wait! When he yells when you hurl his vehicle into a wide arc and set off after the escaping villains. Looks like you've had a bit of luck anyway, as the ground car you were in is a small, powerful, six-wheeled sport model with twin gas turbines. Should be able to full a few hundred kilometers an hour with this. Alright, and I'm actually going to show you a picture of that. I'm going to show you a picture. Suggest something. Uh, maybe? What would you like to suggest, sir? Are you going to suggest that this theme is awesome? Because it is. Just give me a second while I track down, um... I track down this picture for you guys. There it is. I found it. Uh, yes, I have considered doing that. Um, the only reason I pro and I may very well do it. The only issue there is that while I'm doing the good old game stream, I really do want people, I mean, I'd like to be in both, but what I really would like is for people to be able to, I, I don't want people sort of just over hanging out here talking with each other. I mean, you can do that also, but I'd like you to be able to interact with the good old games people and the, you know, their viewers over there as well, because you guys are awesome. And I love you and the best viewers on Twitch, etc. So that's why I'd like that to happen. Um, but uh, but it's a good call, though. I can see that. I probably will host it. Um, I just want to make sure that people... When I'm doing my stream, it's nice for people to be over here watching me, possibly watching them also. Um, but I definitely like the chat interaction is one of the big things that we do well here. And so I'd like to have that over Good Old Games as well. So that was my thought. Okay, so this is what you see, folks. That's the car that you got. It's better than your typical DeLorean, you know. You flick on the traffic radar, picking the sloop up ahead, and accelerate to 200 kilometers per hour. Did you stop to shoot before waving this car down? No, you did not. No, you did not. The sloop flies down the straight and disappears over a humpbacked hill. You cannot see what happens to the road past the crest. Will you assume that the road continues straight and take the crest at high speed, or will you anticipate a corner and slow down a bit? So, what do you think? Are you going to assume that it's straight and go at a high speed? Or are you going to anticipate a corner and slow down a bit? There you go, Thorg. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good call, Shadow. No, I probably will do that. You're right. It's a good call, for sure. Tough call. This actually reminds me of when I was driving in Greece. <laughs> I was driving in, uh, I remember driving on the island of Hania, uh, sorry, uh, island of Crete in Greece. Hania was a town on Crete. And I remember there were a couple times when people passed us, and I swear to God, they passed us around a curve, a blind curve. Like, literally, if there was a car coming the other direction, they would have died. They would have hit them head on at like 45, 50 miles an hour. And they passed me on the left anyway around a curve. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I... I don't even... They were like, well, if you're going to go, you're going to go, I guess. It was just crazy. This is where you vote for random, really, West River? <laughs> this is where you vote for random? You're like, well, YOLO. Woo. Really? Yeah, channel your inner Gran Turismo. Amen to that. Yes. <laughs> is this how you guys actually drive, too? You're like, I'm sure it's fine. Texas license plate. All right, last call, last call. Looks like you guys want to want to YOLO strat it. You used to drive ambulance. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I'll buy that. 
All right, six votes. Here we go. Um, let's see. So you take the crest at high speed. The sports car flies over the crest, becoming momentarily airborne. In front of you, the road takes a sharp hairpin curve to the right. Very tricky. You slam on your brakes when you touch the ground and try to keep your car under control as it bucks into the bend. Lego, you must test your luck. Good job, guys. Way to go. Lego, you must test your luck. I voted random. Worth it. Yes. Really, Shatter? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Did you take the peak of the jump? Yes. You took the peak of the jump, Smacky, and as you went over the top, you heard... In your welded door shut car. That's exactly what happened. Lego, where are you, man? We need that luck roll. What's going on, Lego? Got another about six or seven minutes here. I'd love to get past this car chase. Before we wrap for the night. Although, I'm, I'm really liking this one. I don't know about you guys, but I'm enjoying it. I'm liking it a lot. Lego, what say you? Luck stat? Lego. Hmm. Lego passed out. Apparently. You don't ask us if we slow down anticipating a turn. <laughs> no. I'm telling you, I having, you know, having been to a Mediterranean country. Anticipating a turn is not an issue, apparently. It's just like, you can do it. Alright. Okay, I guess Lego is asleep, or is falling asleep or something. Alright. Um, so, uh, Thorg, why don't you do this for me, Thorg? Can you do a, a random roll? Can you roll um, 2d6? I think it's just exclamation point roll space 2d6. Can you do that for me, Thorg? Exclamation point roll space 2d6. I think that's how you do it. Although, Shadow can correct me if that's wrong. Yeah, I'm making you the emergency dice roller. I think it's roll. I roll a d20. No, you don't want to roll a d20. Oh, really? Okay. So you found a you found a random thing on the on the web, uh, Thorg. Okay, eight it is. So you guys are in fact lucky. The way that luck works, by the way, is whenever you test luck, uh, it has to be equal to or less to be lucky, and then it always drops whether you're lucky or not. So you have the D and D roll on Watsy's page. I use that sometimes. Cool. Thank you, sir. All right. So you are lucky, and that's a good thing because the other one would be insta death. <laughs> Sliding out onto the verge, you manage to keep the car under control. You change down, accelerate, and slingshot down a long, gentle slope. The sloop is still far ahead, doing a good 190 kilometers per hour. Will you accelerate to catch the sloop? Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, sorry, man. We had a dice roll, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Will you accelerate to catch the sloop, or play safe and just match its speed? So it's still a good 190 kilometers ahead of you, and you can see it a pretty good way off. It's a long, gentle slope. So will you accelerate to catch up with it, or just match its speed? Yep. Now you can see a straightaway, by the way. In case anyone's curious about the conditions. 
Just shoot it! Do that! Accelerate, accelerate. What's up, Shadow? Let's make it orky. All right, here we go. The will of chat is... Okay, last call, last call, because it looks like people are pretty confident about what they want to have done here. There we go. Poll winner is Accelerate. The villain's sloop is only 90 meters away from you. You've closed right next to it when it disappears from sight in a wood. The trees are thick and low. It is impossible to tell whether the road will remain relatively straight or not. Now that you are close to him, will you try to accelerate even further, or will you play it safe by staying the same speed while you're in the forest? So will you try to close the gap even further? You're right next to him now almost. Will you try to close the gap even further by accelerating? Or will you play it safe by staying the same speed while you're in the wood? What's it going to be? Stay safe in the wood. I think we can all just sort of generally agree staying safe in the wood is a good thing, right? Okay. Alright, chat seems to be fairly definitive on this. So last call if you want to get your vote in. Get your vote in now while you get the chance. Yeah, you're going at a pretty serious clip, too. Okay, it looks like most people are in agreement about this. All right. You decide to stay the same speed. You pursue the sloop through the forest through a winding path, your bumpers almost touching. Suddenly, the forest disappears and the road is in the open, going up a raised embankment. Will you try to draw your car up next to them, or will you try to ram them from behind? So will you try to draw the car up next to them, or will you ram them from behind? What's it going to be, guys? Ram from behind. Choose choose two because rude as heck. <laughs> choose ram from behind because that's the clear thing that you say to people who are pissing you off, right? No, Rogan. It's uh, actually October. It's actually September 29th. It's uh, one week from... It's now yesterday, my time. So it's next Tuesday, which is the 29th. So it's uh, Tuesday, September 29th at 8 o'clock will be the good old game show. It is. It's just like a big space drug adventure thing. Are you not liking the? Uh, are you not liking the uh, feeling of the? Uh, you you feel like you're back with Freeway Fighter Shadow? Okay. 
So you're going to ram them from behind. The turbines whine as you push the accelerator to the floor, and the car shudders as you smash into the rear of the sloop. Your bumpers mangle slightly, but otherwise the collision has little effect. Test your luck. All right, Lego, you need to test your luck. Here we go. Lego, summoning Lego. Last roll, probably, man. La one of the last couple rolls, anyway. Lego. Where are you, sir? <laughs> the roll's gonna be seven. I know, I know, I know. The guy's got a command sort of built up with him, it's true. You just rolled a seven? Five? <laughs> 51! <laughs> okay. I was like, 51? What? It's a code, all right. So five, all right, that sounds good. Okay. So if you are successful, and you are. Okay. You maintain a steady distance between the vehicles. Okay. The sloop is only a few meters ahead of you when it comes to an S-bend. The big car slops clumsily into the corner far too fast. Here's your chance. As they go around, will you ram them in the back or hit them in the side? So here's your chance, guys. They're going around an S-curve way too fast. Are you going to ram them in the back or hit them in the side? Remember, you're right behind it here. So they're like slopping clumsily. So you're going to ram them in the back or hit them in the side? And you're right behind them, so... Keep in mind, the side might be, I don't know, it might be harder to get them inside, but. Nice, Law. Flank. Well, this is not exactly the same thing, but yes. <laughs> okay. You have space cars, we got this. Nope, oh, Shatter makes a good good point. Theoretically a good point. Alright, I need someone to tie to break this tie. I need someone to break this tie. We got it tied. Three votes for back, three votes for side. I need someone to break this tie. Who's it gonna be? Who will win this Titanic struggle? We don't need logic. Alright. 
Going once. Going twice. All right. Six to four with Rogans doing it. All right, you're going to ram them in the back. You miss completely and burn in a uh, in burn in a fireball of hellfire. No, I'm just kidding. That doesn't happen. Your car leaps forward and smashes into the rear of the sloop, giving the necessary impetus to send it out of control. It fishtails off the road and then flips over and over and over, violently rolling to a halt a hundred meters further on. You pull over to the side of the road. Leaving your own vehicle, you approach the wrecked sloop. Looking inside, you can see that nobody survived. You recover the safety deposit box and open it. Inside are lots of incriminating documents regarding two individuals, Zara Gross and Blaster Babbitt. There are bills for the raw materials necessary to produce Satafil D, which is the drug you were looking for, amounts paid in bribes to various officials, and, what's most important, the location of their receiving facility on Kether. Evidently, the drug arrives from space via shuttle at a little island some 4,000 kilometers off the shore of the main continental landmass. It is stored there until sent to the starport on Kether for shipment out of system. The box even contains the exact coordinates of the island facility. Well, crap. You guys definitely hit the mother load. Okay, so... There you go, people. No Oxycontin. There it is. And I'm going to give you guys a new save point as we wrap up for the evening. Because when we start next time, the next time that we start this session, you guys are going to go find that drug port. That's what's going to happen. We got some evidence, yo. You got the evidence. You got that evidence. Very, very good job, everybody. Very good job. Okay, and you are saved for the night. Very, very nice. Good job, people. Very well done. Good job. I, I really am enjoying this one. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I'm really liking this one a lot. I think partly because it's like, it probably is a little bit easier, but it just feels like so, I don't know. Something about it just feels really like, I like the, I guess I like the way the story is winding together. Um, I'm enjoying that. So, because you know me, story. Uh, all right, give me one second because my webcam is doing weird things. Uh, hang on a second. We're going to do our giveaway and our raid. Um, let me remove. That's better. Good. Lovely. Okay, so um, thank you guys so much. Uh, we are going to do the giveaway now and the raid, but uh, before I do that, just a couple of reminders. First of all, um, remember, Thursday is my big, big, big voiceover stream um, of uh, the end of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Hairbrain Scheme Studios is having to have, hopefully uh, going to have some people there. We're going to have a bunch of pro voice actors with us. Uh, Trendane, um, Yurin, um, who goes as BB Wolf on the, uh, on the voiceovers. Rob from Game Crashers, uh, Russ Guberman, George Ledoux, uh, all of them will be joining me to do voiceover of the last part of Shadowrun Hong Kong, after which on my channel we're going to be doing Alpha Protocol going forward once we wrap up this, Rings of Kether. Um, that's Thursday. On Saturday, we will be having Icewind Dale with the Infinity and Beyond crew, so please make sure to check out that. Next Tuesday is the debut of my show on goodoldgames.com called Pen and Pixels, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, running until 10 p.m. Eastern, after which I'll move over to this channel, and I'm going to be playing Star Trek 25th Anniversary Edition over there, so please make sure to check that out, and then we'll be on a normal schedule from there. If you liked what you saw and heard today, please don't forget... ArvTube for the YouTube channel, Steam Group to get over to the Arvanaut Steam Group and join your friends to hang out in between uh, ArvCasts, and exclamation point ArvTrion to do this. This is the big thing that we're really trying to move forward if we can, guys, because if we can get to that 225 level on the Patreon, then we'll do another voiceover event next month. If we can at 250, we'll do a marathon session, hopefully involving Zelda, Metroid, uh, possibly Castlevania even, or Gran Turismo. So those marathon events can happen, but they can only happen if you guys are able to support the Patreon. So hopefully you'll be able to do so, and you like what you saw and heard, and we'll follow and do all that good stuff. Now we're going to do the giveaway. Thank you guys so much. Now we're going to do the giveaway, and the giveaway works like this. 
um, I am going to give you a choice of one of three possible games given to me through the courtesy of viewers because they are all awesome people. And your choices will be as follows. Choice number one is going to come to you from Brahms, and it is Bioshock, the original Bioshock. So if you win today, you'll get the original Bioshock, if you so choose. That's choice number one. Choice number two, which comes to you courtesy of Build, is Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition. Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition, if you win, uh, that's choice number two, courtesy of Build. And choice number three, courtesy of, let's see... Courtesy of, let's make it, courtesy of Duineade, um, is trying to complete, trying to complete, courtesy of Duineade. By the way, while I'm at this, West River, I never got a Steam request from you, man. I want to be able to send you your game that you won. So please make sure to send me a Steam friend request if you haven't already. I almost forgot to say that. Please make sure to do that, West River. So again, your choices are um, coming from Kilobyte, uh, sorry, Coming from Brahms, excuse me, is Bioshock. So choice number one from Brahms is Bioshock. Choice number two from Build is Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition. And choice number three um, from Duineade is Trying to Complete. Those are your three choices. Those are your three choices. And the giveaway word for tonight is... Thank you so much, Shadow. Giveaway word for tonight is... This seems appropriate. Cow fashion. Cow fashion. Please type in the word cow fashion if you guys are interested in winning one of those three games. And as you do that, I am going to see who we are going to raid today. Please type in the word cow fashion if you guys are interested in winning one of those three games. see who we've got okay the space cows are still a mystery to me I mean I mean I know Smacky, there are some things maybe that man is not meant to know, you know, and maybe the cow is, maybe the space cow is something you're just not aware of. You don't know the details. I mean, that's, that's what I would say. Maybe. Just saying. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so type in those words, cow fashion, if you guys are interested in winning one of those three games. All right, last call. Right now, you got a twenty percent chance of winning. Those are pretty good odds. If you guys get on board, you might be able to win those. Win one of those fairly easily. And again, thank you so much to my viewers for making this possible. Yeah, and don't forget if you guys think about one of the emotes that you'd like uh, me to try, uh, you know, and you have an idea for one, please send it my way, and we'll see if it's workable for the better TTV emotes. Okay, last call coming up here. Last call, last call, last call. All right, and the winner. Smacky. Patreon alert. Yay! Patreon alert. Somebody boosted their role. Somebody boosted it. We're up to 226. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. First of all, congratulations. Two things happened at once. First of all, Smacky Butts. Congratulations, Smacky. Thank you so much, man. What would you like? Congratulations for winning the giveaway. Secondly, thanks, guys, whoever boosted the Patreon. If we can keep that there into October 1st, that means that we will have our voiceover event for next month as well. So that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Hurrah! Now we're only 20. Thank you. First of all, whoever that was who boosted their pledge, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I really, really. 
bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And that puts us only $24 away from the marathon session at $250. So if we can hit that by October 1st, we could do that as well. So voiceover hype. If we can keep this to October 1st, we'll have a voiceover event next month. If we can boost it up to $250, we might be looking at a marathon event too. So hopefully we can do that. All right. You're going to take Bioshock. Very, very good. Let me send that off to you right now. And then we're going to do our raid so nobody leave. Nobody leave. Uh, ah, there we go. So, uh, this one, by the way, so you know, Smacky, is a humble bundle code. So be aware of that. This is a humble bundle code. Oh, you finally, you just got in on it? Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like the same number of, uh, it looks like the same number of patrons. So you did that for the first time, Ghost. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Ghost Number One fan. I appreciate that, man. But it looks like the same number of patrons, so I don't know what happened there. But thank you, dude. Thank you, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that, Ghost. Thanks, man. And for all the people who support the Patreon, and as I say, if you can't support the Patreon, I totally get it. Like, your being here is the most important thing, but supporting the Patreon is basically the equivalent of a sub button until I'm able to get partnered, and so would really, you know, it really does help if you're able to do it. If not, though, I appreciate you guys being here. It's the most important thing, but if you are able to help, I really do appreciate it. Um, okay. And let's see. All right, and then I'm going to give you, I'm going to send this right off to you, so make sure that it works properly. Okay, Smacky, it is on its way to you, Smacky. It is on its way to you. Oh, it said it wouldn't take it until the first? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, all right. Okay, cool. Um, all right, that is on its way to you. And if you happen to see Brahms, you can thank him for uh, you can thank him for the assist. And there's that. Cool, lovely, awesome. Thank you very much uh, to um, thank you very much to Brahms and congratulations, Mackie. All right, guys, we're gonna do our raid. So here's the raid. You guys know the way this works. Um, to do a raid here, the way we do it is we type in exclamation, we type in the Arvanauts have landed, followed by Volcania, capital V O L C A N I A. But the key here is you don't do this until you actually hear my audio outro. Once you hear my audio outro, then and only then do you want to actually come in uh, like a mighty stream. So you want to wait until you hear my audio outro before you do it. Um, before I do that, though, I want to thank everyone who was here tonight, making this such an awesome stream. I really had a lot of fun tonight. Um, if you were uh, a part of this, thank you so much. I appreciate it. First of all, thanks to my wonderful mods. Thank you to Glog. Thank you to Kale Satobo. Thank you to Nedowin. Thank you to Shadowed Mage for that plus many other things. Thank you to Thorg. Thanks to all of my mods. You guys are the best mods on Twitch. Thank you also to the gun run gun run pleasure to have you in here sir i hope you like what you saw and heard pleasure to have you with us um thanks to my regular viewers thanks to brandhauser thanks to uh divinorium thanks to dark akkad dark akkad I, I feel like you may have just followed me recently I, I don't know if you followed me or not, but that name sounds really familiar. If you haven't followed me, I hope you will. And if you have followed, then welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank you so much to Divinorium. Thank you so much to L the Elf. What's up, L? Good to see you. Thank you so much to EMC. Always a pleasure, EMC. Good to see Game Crashers as always. Thank you so much, Rob. Again, Rob, part of the R Vocalist. Follow Rob at Game Crashers if you haven't already. Really, really good dude. Thanks to Ghost SSD. Thanks to Ghost Number One Fan. Again, Ghost, thank you so much for joining the Patreon. I really appreciate it. Thanks to Glob Monkey. Thanks to Gray Dibbick. Thank you to Joey. Thank you to Lee. Thank you to Pork. Kitos, Laporte, what's up, man? Another stream you guys should be following. Thank you to Lord. Thank you to Matmo. Thank you to Rad Count. Thank you to Roix. Um, Roix, uh, good to talk to you, man. Good to see you. Uh, Roix has got some exciting news coming up pretty soon, which hopefully we'll be able to share with you. Thanks, Roix. Good to see Shatter Mage. It's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you to see Shrounfs. Good to see Smacky Butts. Congratulations again. Good to see the Grows. Good to see With Intent. Good to see Call and good to see Rogan. Thank you guys all. Love you all. You guys are the best viewers on Twitch. That's it for me. I will see you guys on Thursday night. 
at 9 p.m. Eastern for the uh, awesome voiceover hype conclusion of Shadowrun Hong Kong with voice actors, the R vocalists. Now, we're going to go over here for the raid. Again, don't do this until you hear my audio outro. We are going here to Series Runner, my friend Series. We got to encourage him. He's getting back into streaming again, finally. It took him long enough. And he's playing one of my favorite games, Arkham City. So let's go over there and give him some love and uh, make sure to do that once you hear my audio outro. That's it for me. Until I see you next time, thank you all so much. Follow all the things. Support the Patreon. Uh, you know, Steam Group, ArvTube, all that kind of good stuff. And keep in mind, you are all wonderful people. Be good to each other. I'll see you on Thursday night. Have a good night. Give yourself